Mapping from English into clear statements in logic is not straightforward. Let's look at just a few examples. Even simple words can have multiple meanings. For example, consider the word hot. We could say the chili is hot, meaning spicy, or we could say the chili is hot, meaning temperature hot. In logic, we'll never use the same predicate to mean two different things. But by the way, even after we figured out what property we're talking about, we're not home free. Both meanings of hot are vague. This chili is spicy hot. This chili isn't spicy hot. But what about this one? Consider, what do you think Santa would like? We could leave pizza or milk and cookies. Surely what Alan is suggesting is pizza or the more classic milk and cookies. But now suppose that Alan says, We could leave pizza or chili and cookies. Now he's probably not suggesting pizza or chili and cookies. A much more reasonable meal for Santa would be pizza or chili plus cookies. Cookies go with everything. English sentences are often structurally ambiguous in this and various other ways. We count on our listeners to know a lot about what we're talking about and thus to be able to figure out what we mean. Logical languages cannot allow this. We must write what we mean. So we must write either this parenthesized expression or this one. English has evolved to be efficient. It has to be. A moderately fast-talking person can speak about 160 words a minute. Contrast this with a not very state-of-the-art Wi-Fi connection, which can transmit about 30 million words per minute. Pronouns are one of English's most powerful efficiency tools. Consider, Victoria rode her bicycle down the street. It was her birthday present. What is the antecedent of it? In other words, to what does it refer? The answer seems obvious, the bicycle. But let's change the second sentence slightly and then see how our answer changes. It was crowded. Again, what is the antecedent of it? Now the answer seems equally obvious. It must be the street. And let's try a third one. It's her favorite thing to do. Now the antecedent of it is the act of bicycle riding. The process we've just described is called anaphora resolution. It often, as in these examples, requires appeal to additional knowledge about the domain of discourse. We, people, choose the interpretation that we think makes sense. Logical languages, though, cannot allow this kind of ambiguity. When we write a logical expression, we must be clear exactly what we're talking about. So, way oversimplifying, we might encode the first sentence as a logical claim in this way. There exists an X that's a bicycle and owned by Victoria, a Y that's a street, and a Z that's a riding event. Victoria is the agent, causer of the event. The bicycle is the object, the thing that got ridden, and the street is the location of the event. Then we can write an unambiguous logical claim that corresponds to our preferred interpretation of the second sentence in the first example, X, the bicycle was a birthday present. Or we can write a non-ambiguous claim for the second example, why the street was crowded. Or for the third example, Z, the riding event, is Victoria's favorite kind of thing. By the way, to see why it's so important that logical languages be unambiguous, consider Juan Sao Paulo walking across the street. He waved. Even with all the knowledge that we bring to the table, this sentence is ambiguous. He could be either Juan or Paolo. Either of them could have waved. Target doesn't have a lot of things. That's not true. Target does have a lot of things. That isn't what I meant. There are a lot of things that Target doesn't have. In logic, we must distinguish between there are many things with the property that my store does not have them, and it is not true that my store has a lot of things. Let's do one last example. Consider, Jesse thinks that Parker knows who will win the game tomorrow. 
reasoning about what other people know or believe is important. Unfortunately, it's not possible in a general and effective way to represent and reason with claims like this in first order logic. But there are extensions of first order logic that do support this. Many English sentences are ambiguous and maybe vague. Logical statements are not. This means two important things. Before we can translate English sentences into logical statements, we must figure out exactly what the English sentences actually mean. And people can end up disagreeing with each other because, although they agreed to some premises stated in English, they didn't actually agree on the same logical premises. 